Hello Team Phoenix and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Catherine Minor. Please call me Kate Mimi. I am a United Kingdom registered nurse from Kenya and what we do on my YouTube channel is actually health education and discussing issues that are of importance to healthcare workers. I really want to address something that has been bugging me and people have been inboxing me about sending emails text messages about this it is about healthcare assistance and um, we call them patient care attendants in Kenya sometimes people might call them nurse aides so how do they get jobs in the United Kingdom are they covered with work permits what about them so sit back relax and let's talk about this shall we once again welcome to my youtube channel I really appreciate your subscription, your liking, your comments, and everything that comes with that. We almost at a thousand subscribers. Can you imagine? I really never thought about YouTubing, and when I did, you guys have continued to believe in me. So thank you because of trusting in my brand and what I'm doing right here. So from the bottom of my heart, Asante Nisana, thank you very much. So guys, when Brexit happened, something was affected in the United Kingdom, and that is the job market. Actually, there became the it. it came to a point where there are so many jobs but there are no people to take up the jobs, take up the roles because most of these workers came from Europe and Brexit made things messy and complicated for them. So many people opt not to come to the United Kingdom from Europe. That's number one. Number two, it allowed a chance for the United Kingdom government to open opportunities for other people from overseas, not just the European community, but also from Africa, from India, from the Philippines, and everywhere else around the world. Now, we are thinking about healthcare assistants or what are called clinical support workers. In Kenya, we call them patient care attendants, and sometimes we call them nurse aides. You might realize um i think in the united in the united states they could be uaps or lpns sorry i'm not very conversant with the united states system so i'm just you know i'm, I'm just um stumbling in the dark here i'm not sure whether they are lpns or they are uaps mm -mm, i don't know i cannot lie to you guys so i don't know but they could be one of those so these are people who take care of patients they are able to conduct some of the traditional roles that were tasked to nurses for example assisting patients with the activities of daily living adls also helping um patients with uh, taking of vital signs that is observations recording them sometimes even uh, measuring urine output and things like that perhaps you might have come across them if if you're uh, in a mission hospital in kenya you might have come across across them or even in a private hospital in Kenya and they are very well you know very, very well um, conversant with things to do with the patient sometimes I know people think that they are nurses but they are not they are they are in a category of themselves all right and the United Kingdom is one of those places in the world that has really put so much emphasis on the role of clinical support workers or healthcare assistants or patient care attendants Choose your name and use it if you don't mind, okay? The recent government communication is that from the year 2022 into the future, the government is going to pay more emphasis on hiring healthcare assistants from overseas. Yes, they published that indeed healthcare workers are eligible for the health and care worker visa, but it has been quite difficult for them to get jobs. So how do you go about it if you're in Kenya? I have tried to separate this information into two categories. Category number one is for nurses, clinical officers, and anyone else who has a diploma or a certificate in healthcare in a healthcare related course but you have not yet met the qualifications for being um, registered with your particular regulating body in the united kingdom what am, what am i saying you're a nurse but you've not done your english exam or you failed your english exam you're a nurse you haven't yet done your cbt exam or there is something pending in your nursing um, qualification journey to the united kingdom so what do you do you can apply as a healthcare assistant number two you're a clinical officer in kenya and you don't know where you fit in the united kingdom because when you think about a physician as assistant they're asking you for a degree and you have a diploma from kmtc so you really are not sure where you fit you're a doctor and you've not passed your blood exams or there is something missing in your in your journey this is where i call you people group a so what you do is head to www.nhsjobs.uk or track jobs t-r-a-c jobs 
uk and apply for a job as a healthcare assistant you coming in not because that is the role that you want to work in but it is because it's going to give you a footing as you try and do your exams complete your exams while you're still in the united kingdom so you are group a people what do you do just direct application apply for that job and you are going to get a certificate of sponsorship there is a code for you and if you go to www.gov.uk people if you head to that website and just type healthcare worker visa you're going to get that there is a role for healthcare assistant they are called senior care workers okay so you come in as a senior care worker yes you're going to get minimum pay and that is around 10 pounds or 12 depending on where you're going to be posted it is actually better right now because when i came in as a band form nurse they used to pay us eight pounds and 50 pence Arr, it was an insult <laughs> but we survived didn't we so um i know that that is what you need to do so that your group one or group a and i'm done with your case now let me talk to the rest of the population so group two or group b you've had some experience with taking care of patients for example you have been employed in a private hospital in kenya or a nursing home in kenya and you've been taking care of patients or you went for that wonderful course at avenue hospital or nairobi hospital or wherever else they are teaching anything to do with healthcare assistance nowadays in kenya i'm talking about nairobi hospital and avenue hospital because i know that those two hospitals are some of the most reputable institutions in kenya when it comes to training clinical support workers or healthcare assistants no i've not been paid to advertise them i'm just speaking from a point of using their services or people they have trained okay so what do you do the first question is is that paper recognized in the united kingdom and my simple answer is no it is not because it does not ma measure up to the to the level of education that the naric body or the body that you know checks papers you know to compare them is this paper from this person who has been internationally trained equivalent to what standards of education are there in the united kingdom and the truth of the matter is no it does not measure up but do you really need experience for you to be able to do this um healthcare assistance the truth is yes you do so the experience you have counts for something please believe me experience is very important you working in a hospital maybe you're working helping in the theaters maybe you're helping physio in the physio department probably you're just in the wards and you really do a lot of things maybe in palliative care or things like that this 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 role is for you there's only one thing i want you to do even if you apply for the job um you're going to get it please hear me out you will you'll get the job but the problem will come in proving that you really are qualified for that job that is why i want you to take extra step and this step number one you're going to take a level three health and social care certificate course let me say that again level three health and care certificate course in the united kingdom please do it online just head online search for that particular course there are so many colleges in the united kingdom that are offering that course please do it it is not expensive if you want within six months you'll be done some people do it even within three months go ahead take this course why because you're going to get a certificate that is recognized in the united kingdom am i making sense really i really hope i am once you have this certificate please do your ielts exam that is your english exam even before you look for the job please do this exam so you have two things that are now working in your favor number one you have a certification that is recognized in the united kingdom number two you've got your english examination okay now the third thing you're going to do is now seriously look for a job once again format your cv into something that your employer is going to really want to meet you even before you know just by reading what you have written this is where i have a problem with um many people when you're writing your cv can you put yourself in the shoes of your employer please try and do that you you cannot tell me the machines that you have you have handled for god's sake i have also handled so many machines but what skills and knowledge are you having that you learned from handling those machines 
don't tell me you worked with a mechanical ventilator as a healthcare assistant. Okay, fine. Anyone can do that. What makes you think that I cannot do it as an employer, for example? Do you think I really want to know that? What I want to know is, were you able to interpret what was happening on the mechanical ventilator by escalating it to your nurse? Because, of course, you work under the nursing staff, the registered nurse. Please remember that. And you work under also the doctors and everybody else. So, were you able to do that? Were you able to notice problems and escalate? Were you able to work independently as well? Because there are some things you don't need to tell anybody. Are you able to talk about um, vital signs? What does it mean? What are the normal and the abnormals? I mean, those are the skills that we are talking about. Problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, decision making skills, working autonomously. These are the things that I want to see in your CV. And your CV should be no more than one and a half pages. Maximum actually it is at two pages. I don't know what to do to help you guys um, really format your CVs. I would be happy to do it, but I want you to learn the art of doing your own CVs. But it's okay. If you can't do it, I'm going to charge you a lot of money just because you don't want to do the right thing. I'll charge you a lot of money, then I can write your CV for you. But still, you'll have to give me something for me to be able to do that, okay? You'll have to give me a template. You'll have to give me a master CV, what you call a master CV because that is where i'm going to be able to tailor your experience and whatever you want to say now the other thing when you're applying for a job on nhsjobs.uk actually is the, your personal statement please stop photocopying stop copying and pasting personal statements okay look at the trust that you're working with let me take an example of cambridgeshire or cambridgeshire depending on who taught you english you want to come and work in Cambridge, but you have also applied for a job in Oxford. Can you stop copying and pasting that personal statement from Cambridge to Oxford? Tailor your information to the particular trust that you want to work in. This is very important, guys. Even for you nurses, doctors, and everybody out there, it is very important. Stop copying and pasting your personal statements. The other thing is, Stop using abbreviations. Please, what is NMC? What is CBT? And what in the world is IELTS? Stop it. Stop using abbreviations. Because the people that are going to first see your CV are actually not nurses. They, they, they may not even have an idea what that is. So it comes off as jargon. And it, it means that you, you're not very keen in, in your application. You really don't pay attention to details. So stop using abbreviations okay the other thing is be honest with what you're writing do not imagine things and then just fix them there have somebody if you're not very confident with what you've written kindly have somebody go through it before you hit that submitting button and this is where many nurses are telling me oh Catherine, i've been looking for a job with 10 trusts 50 trusts and there are no jobs no no there's something you're doing wrong there is something you're doing wrong and until we sit down and talk about it, you'll keep applying for those jobs and you'll keep missing out on interviews, okay? Please make sure that you get good internet connectivity when you're going for the interview. It is very important. Yes, good internet and uh, use some headphones to cut out background noise. Be confident. Is that interview. Get your work permit and come over. You're going to be earning a salary of a band for nurse or a healthcare assistant. It is usually the same money. So allow me to just use those words interchangeably for now. You're going to earn around um, £10 per hour, £11 per hour, depending on where you are employed at. Or even £9 per hour, depending on where you're employed at. And the thing that I want to tell you about the United Kingdom is that you will always start from somewhere and this somewhere is usually below you know the bottom of the you know the equation kindly don't fret please do not feel discouraged when you're a healthcare assistant that is not your destiny unless really that is all that you want to do with your life remember this country is giving you an opportunity to go back to school this country is the only country i've seen so far where you can become a nurse you know, by being a healthcare worker and then you transition into nursing very easily by going back to school for kiddo two years. It is very simple. It is quite very simple and it is very doable. You can also become a, 
physiotherapist or a physiotherapy assistant you can become a dietitian or a dietitian assistant there are so many things that you can do please do not be stuck in the role of a healthcare assistant and say oh by the way i'm done like these people are paying such little money and this is all that i can do you have to open your eyes all right people so that is it for now that's all that i'm going to tell you i really hope it opens your eyes to the opportunities that are out there please be confident because i think that is what most of you are lacking you're not confident in your skills and in your knowledge perhaps it's because the healthcare system in africa generally has been um misrepresented it has been you, you know the, the media is always talking about something going wrong with healthcare workers probably you feel that your power as a healthcare worker has been taken away from you so you feel powerless even when you're expressing yourself even when you're doing things that you know that indeed this is what i should be doing but i want you to know and realize today that you're powerful just by being a healthcare worker so please may that power that you have inside you be transformed into something that your employer or your potential employee is going to look at and say oh I want to meet this person oh this person is good let us give them an interview and see whether they can measure up to what they have written okay so that is it for now if you have further questions or you have further input to what i have said please by all means put it in the comments down or on the comments box i'm very liberal when it comes to things that i say i do not think that i know everything i only share what i know and if you feel that there is something you want to add go ahead and do that so have a very lovely holiday season i really like everything that you people are doing for this youtube channel continue liking subscribing and it is my utmost utmost hope to see you over in the united kingdom so toodoo